Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your reading. So when I was meditating for this month's reading for you guys, um, I saw this image of this woman. You know those uh, area rugs that we have in our house? They're really hard to clean thoroughly, okay? And the, the traditional way in which people clean the rug is they take it outside and they beat it. They beat out all the dust. They could even uh, rinse it with like a power hose. Okay, that way to, that, that's the only way I feel to really, really get all the dirt, all the grime out of the area rug. Vacuuming over it can only remove the surface stain. It doesn't really do any type of deep cleaning. So I see this woman um, hauling, like pulling and holding the, pulling the area rug. It's really big. She pulls it out and then she puts it on this industrial like clothesline and she takes like um, sticks and then she beats it and then this this giant cloud of dust just comes out and she keeps going at it and um, after a while the cloud gets smaller and smaller and smaller the cloud of dust and then she gets the power hose and then she like thoroughly just sprays at it and she keeps spraying and spraying until the water runs clear okay so that indicates to me some type of a massive deep cleaning um, is potentially happening in your life or needs to happen in your life in a certain area of your life and it's it's almost like a major major purging process to get all the dirt all the grime all the stain to do some really really deep thorough fixing and cleaning in some area and, and then she puts it it's it's already on that industrial really strong uh, like super fortified clothesline and she hangs it and the sun is out so it's going to dry on its own and the other image that i saw is um i saw this boat and um, it looks like a, a cartoon type of a scene. There's a waterway, there's like a lake or something, and the boat has a lot of lanterns in it, and it's all lit up. And um, it's coming closer and closer and closer to shore. And so it seems like there's some type of festivity, some type of a gala, some type of an event on the boat. Um, I don't see people dancing, but they're dressed pretty nicely and uh, all the lanterns are lit up so it seems like something that's like a, a really fun festive activity and the boat comes to shore it docks and then all the elegant people from the, the boat they come towards the land so i feel with that that image it almost seems like it just feels to me like a homecoming it feels to me like you know the journey is over now we're on to land we're on to solid ground things are a little bit safe a lot safer a lot more stable a lot more um predictable okay so based off those two images for you guys what i'm feeling is i feel like you know the worst of it is, is done and over with there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I feel like you're able to reach this light at the end of the tunnel, mainly because of your doing, of your ability to purge yourself of things that are no longer serving you, ways of doing, ways of thinking, ways of um, ways in which many of you have held on to situations and things from your past, okay? Um, I'm getting an image of somebody being a little bit of a hoarder or a pack rat. Somebody needing to like get rid of their possessions and their belongings that they've hoarded since they were, you know, an infant, since they were really, really young. And I'm also seeing like many of you having a lot of emotional attachments to things, objects, places and people and if those experiences have been very positive then you want to hang on to them and that's great but if those experiences have been quite negative and i feel like they might have been quite negative um you hang on to them and they really weigh you down they weigh you down in terms of affecting your self-esteem they weigh you down by you know miring you in a lot of self-doubt like am i worthy am i capable am i able to move on past this and i do feel many of you you know possibly carrying that around as a security blanket okay um and and one of the reasons why people do that is 
they carry this security blanket around that might not be entirely positive in an effort to tell themselves like i knew it i shouldn't have done it because nothing works out i i should have trusted my gut instinct and not have done that because you know it's always going to blow up in my face so it's almost like that security blanket as an excuse to not try new things that security blanket as an excuse to tell yourself you know I'm a failure, I'm not worthy of new things, or I'm not worthy of all these blessings that are coming into the picture for me. And I want you to be very, very careful because I feel like many of you, um, cancers are typically very, 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 very shy people. And I also feel like, you know, uh, many of you, you have a, a social facade that you put on, okay? You like to be liked, and there's nothing wrong with that. We always love to be accepted and to be looked up to and to be liked by other people. And I also feel like many of you, you have a very, um, you have a way about you where you put people at ease, okay? And you're almost like a, a, an emotional and also a social chameleon where you kind of blend in with your environment as well. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because I feel like you like to be liked and you are very easy to talk to for a lot of people. You're also very nice, very caring, very genuine, and you don't want to see anybody left out. So if you're in a social setting, for example, you want everyone to feel included. So you try to engage everybody in that social context so that no one feels left out because you're very, very sensitive to if the shoe were on the other foot and you're in a new social environment and you don't want to be left out. You would want to be included and you would want people to be inclusive towards you. But I also feel like, you know, that that really nice social facade. And I feel like many of you, you know, you have a really good heart, but I feel like it comes out in the, the more of the facade way where you might bend over backwards and accommodate and do a lot of things for people especially if they are not deserving of it okay and so this whole purging process okay um i don't need to please anybody okay i'm a nice person i don't need to go out of my way bend over backwards to prove anything to anybody I don't need to constantly, you know, look for other people to validate what I feel about myself. And I especially don't need that attention from other people in order for me to accept who I am. So I, I feel like this process of shedding the old skin, the old way of doing, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and seeing you for your authentic self without the self-doubt, without all of that negative self-talk from the past the need to please the need for validation and the need to you know uh, live up to a certain ideals and really really high expectations that you set for yourself and you're able to reach it but every time you're a little bit closer and closer to reaching the apex you kind of uh, lose momentum lose steam lose self-confidence Okay, this can be, you know, really liking somebody, really, really wanting to make an offer towards a person like a crush or somebody just you, you have really strong feelings for. And I feel like once, you know, you're, you're like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And you work yourself up to the point where you're just like, I'm going to do it. You're, you start approaching the person. And then as soon as you get close to the person, I see like, you know, you get tongue tied, you get nervous, you get really, really um, weak in the knees. And it's it has nothing to do with the other person's reaction towards you. It's just you talk yourself out of doing things that are actually really, really good for you. OK, so I see a purging process. I see a cleansing. And then I also see reaching that light at the tunnel where you're able to see your authentic self. So it's really, really beautiful. Um, one of the things that I want you to be very uh, careful about, and um, the two fives came out first, so I wanna talk about them, okay? You have great cards, by the way. Just let me put that out there. Um, first of all, five of wands. This is a lot about conflict. 
and it is internal in nature okay internal conflict being uh, the, the tug of war the push and pull on the one hand we want to hold back we want to take care of ourselves we want to preserve our attention our energy our time for ourselves because many of you have big goals big dreams that you want to materialize okay but you're also looking at it like that mountain in front of this man it's so high it's covered in trees there are no clear paved roads so it's it's almost like hitting a certain milestone in your life where you want to do big things but these things these um ideals have never been trailblazed before no one has done it before you might not have the proper guidance you might not have the map you might not feel like you have the proper mentorship or the right preconditions to allow you to tackle such an insert like um to tackle such a great task okay so there's no roadmap Everything is just a little bit like daunting. Like, how do I get to the top of the mountain? I'm right here. There are no trails. It has never, it's, it's like virgin land. It has never been explored. It has never been touched. And you're a little bit scratching your head. Like, how do I do that? So I feel many of you have really, really big goals and big dreams and big, 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 big aspirations. It's floating out there in the ethers. And I feel like the month of March is when things start to gel and start to culminate. And you know, the path, one step at the time, at a time, will start to kind of clear up for you. Okay? So what I'm feeling is, you know, on the one hand, you want to preserve time, energy, resources in order to build on and, and to really give yourself the Give yourself permission even to explore this new virgin land, this new big dream that you have. And on the other hand, there are so many demands from so many, many people asking for your time, asking for your resources. And so I definitely feel this push and pull energy about you. Like, when do I hold back? When do I stop saying yes to other? When do I stop, you know, like leaking <clears throat> my energy towards other people and then feeling exhausted energetically financially even just um, in every way possible doing and bending over backwards for a lot of people and at the end of the day you feel like I don't even have anything left for myself so that that's what I'm, I'm sensing here you're giving away a lot you have been giving away a lot of your time a lot of your resources a lot of your energy that you don't have and I feel like you need to really, really draw back, focus on these big dreams that you're trying to accomplish for yourself so that you can keep this vision in the center of your mind and you don't lose sight of it. Many of you are afraid to say no to people because you feel like saying no to them might make them feel like you're either being stingy, you're either being unfair, or selfish god forbid you don't want them to think that of you but i feel like it gets to the point where we all need to draw back our energies and, and start to learn to take care of ourselves and especially if we have big goals big dreams we need to really focus on that we need to really focus on the research we need to focus on that vision how to achieve it and we don't really have the time and the energy to waste on other things when we have these things clearly in alignment with us okay it's not about being selfish it's about being smart and i feel like many of you are struggling with this this energy how much do i give to myself if i say no if i pull back my energy and my generosity my resources Will people think of me differently? Will will they talk behind my back? Will they say I'm selfish or you know stingy or whatever it is? It doesn't really matter, but I know that it does affect you. So it's easier said than, than done, but I know that it does affect you. What people feel about you and think about you really, really, really deeply affect you on a very heartfelt level. And I would just say that you've been nothing but sweet, 
and generous and loving to other people and i feel like it's time for you to turn your back on a few people especially if they've been kind of milking it and especially if they have been combative and not cooperative with you okay so the two fives i feel like somebody's energy comes in like this um I'm getting like, um, you know, the, the, the word home wrecker is usually associated with third parties, but I feel like this is someone who's a little bit destructive, whose behaviors is when unchecked can be very catastrophic, who might have like, um, a very perverse way of doing things or a very, um, careless, impulsive as well as lack of direction or lack of a, a strong sense of morality, okay? I'm seeing the smoke and uh, the, the smoke, it blows with the wind. So it's somebody without a strong sense of self. They just kind of flop out there and, and you know, trying to find themselves. And they might gravitate towards the wrong people. They might experiment with the wrong things. They might have very dubious sense of morality. And I feel like some of you might have been giving a lot of your time and generosity trying to guide this person or trying to help this person but it gets to the point where your advice your counsel falls on deaf ears they're going to do what they're going to do and i feel like their presence or their influence might not be the best for you to be around energetically so we have to learn to pull back a little bit and we have to learn to take care of our own emotional and mental you know peace okay and it's okay to do that so that's um that's the first energy here the other thing that's coming into the picture is um many of you might have spent a lot of time um I'm hearing like um, barking up the wrong tree socializing wanting to be you know included and uh, you spend a lot of time, a lot of energy of arranging for like, you know, group outings, happy hour, wanting to be a part of a community, wanting to be a part of a social group. And you feel like, you know, the only way is to take charge. Like, let me arrange, let me be the one to get everybody together. And you're very good at that. So like I said, you have the social facade about you. Deep down, I feel like, you know, you, you like good company but you, I, I also feel like that social facade comes out when you want to be included and you you might be the one behind the scenes arranging all of these you know social gatherings and things like that and i i feel like a lot of your attention your time resources as well could be funneled towards that okay three of cups is generally a very very good card it's a very very good card um, but it can indicate a little bit of superficiality if we're not careful. So a lot of time, a lot of resources, and a lot of energy might be dumped in this avenue with the people that might not be deserving. And so it's okay for you to pull back and it's okay for you to really um, do whatever it is that you need to do on the practical end to get your big plans and big dreams moving along. All right? Um, we definitely we have two aces here and i'm going to talk about that in a little bit but i i do sense as well that you have somebody that is really really interested in you okay and it's coming from your friendship circle big friendship circle vibe somebody has um great 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 feelings for you it comes up here in the ace of cups and uh, i'm feeling this this is somebody who is um a little bit socially awkward okay they're very serious minded so it's like they don't really know how to lighten up and you might have um, and this is how you know who this person might be so like they you know they, they can be like social but I feel like deep down they're very extrovert uh, introverted and then I also feel like they keep to themselves, they keep their own counsel, they don't really share a lot. And I feel like this is somebody who has been through the ringer, they have been through a lot, a lot. And so they're a little bit introverted. Um, they find it hard to socialize because when you have been through a lot and then you go out and socialize and people are really talking about you know very frivolous things or very minor issues, what I call like first world problems, 
um, the other that person feels like they can't really relate. And I feel like they go to these functions um, in the hopes that you would be there. They don't really enjoy putting themselves in the spotlight or in an environment where they have to mingle and socialize. But I feel like they do it because they are hoping to catch a glimpse of you or to run into you or to be around you. And so I do feel like they really, really like you. And I feel like the, the communication between the two of you might be a little bit strained because um, <clears throat> when you interact with them, they, they tend to, you know, so let's say you're at a bar right, and everyone's having fun. And when you interact with them, they err on the side of heavier, more serious topics. So I, I say like socially awkward because in an environment where people are socializing and just having, you know, really lighthearted conversation, this person is so serious that they bring the energy down. Not that they're a bad person. They're just so serious. That pentacles on his head. It's like all conversations are very, very serious or very, very heavy. And you just want to socialize. You just want to have fun. You just want to, you know, have lighthearted conversations and interaction. And this person is kind of like that Debbie Downer. And I feel like they really feel a certain way about you. And you might not even be aware of how how they've been going through such great lengths to be in your presence. You're not aware. I feel like you're, you've are you got your back turned. They're going through such great lengths to be in your presence. And I feel like their love is very, very real because just imagine somebody who's like this serious offering their love. It is real, it is sincere, and it is definitely worth exploring. So I feel like you have this option on the table for you in the month of March. Um, I would say many of you are coming out of this tunnel of light, like out of the dark tunnel into the light. So you might have recently like uh, broken up and you're now single. You want to socialize and there will be opportunities for massive amount of dating. Okay. And I feel like you might have a lot of options, but, but there's definitely somebody here catching your um somebody who is really captivated by you they're definitely more serious i would say probably a little bit older than you by like about three years five years is what i'm sensing i have two threes two fives um three of cups three of wands five of swords five of wands so i feel like there's somebody uh who might be a little bit older than you by possibly three years or five years and I feel like they, they feel like you're the one. They feel like you're the one. Um, they feel like, you know, you have that sensitivity about you where, like I said, they've been through a lot, but when they talk to you, they feel comfortable. They feel like you never judge them. And, and water signs in general, never ever show judgment or judge others or, or ever show like uh, disbelief you know, skepticism or, or disbelief, when someone tells you a very serious traumatic story, I feel like you just take it in. And, and because of that, people feel really comfortable naturally sharing a lot of information with you. If you find this person opening up and sharing information with you, I feel like that's because they're, they're looking to, you know, make this really, really big offer towards you. So I feel like this is, um, if, if you're socializing, there will be a lot of options. There's also one person in particular that I feel is going to make this unexpected offer to you. And it's going to be, you know, you're going to feel like, wow, I, I, I've, I've really captured this person's imagination or, you know, whatever you've been waiting on, the boat is coming in. Okay. So the boats are in three of wands, um, waiting for the opportunity when it comes to the big love or the great love, I feel like that offer is going to be in. You have quite a few people that are interested and they're in the picture. And I also see you here reciprocating. Okay, so I feel like you're going to have um, some people that you've been eyeing that will be making an offer. And then I do feel the offer is going to be reciprocated. So the period of waiting with this hangman is no longer um 
it's, it's no longer a problem. Okay. So we're heading towards that light at the end of the tunnel where the boats come in, like that boat with the lanterns on it. And I just see like opportunities for festivities, opportunities for outing opportunities for really, really extravagant and romantic getaways that are just, um, really right up your alley. Okay. Because I, I, I see like some very visually appealing places, locations, like just, um, if someone tells you, Hey, I've got us tickets to do this. And you're just like, wow, that sounds magical. Like something very magical, some type of an outing or socializing event or something is very, very magical. And I feel like it's going to unfold for you. And I see you almost like that anxious little kid who couldn't go to sleep because the next day he's going to Disneyland. That's what it feels like to me, but it has a more romantic um, slant to it. Okay. Um, needless to say, we have as well, Ace of Pentacles. This is a new job. This is a new uh, enterprise as well as a new income generating opportunity. It's going to be coming into the picture for you. Um, I see many people escalating going to, towards like promotions. Okay. Like I I'm, I'm seeing this step ladder, like going up a, a notch when it comes to your income generating potential. I'm also seeing for many of you, if you have been out of commission. So if you are like, for example, a stay at home mom, a stay at home dad, you're returning to the work environment. Okay. So the transition, it's going to work out really, really well, but you know, anytime we, anytime we let our skills lie dormant. So if you've been a stay at home mom or a stay at home dad, and you've been away from the labor force for quite some time, you're going to get a little bit rusty. Okay. So don't beat yourself up over it. If you feel like things are happening so fast that you can't keep up, or you feel like technology has changed, or if you feel like you're, you're dealing with so many systems, so many expectations, so many systems, procedures, and just, um, processes don't feel bad. You're going to be okay. You just need to flex those muscles and kind of like break away from that rust. And then things will start to flow automatically because you do have a very intuitive sense of, uh, knowing to do the right thing at the right time, like a, a divine sense of timing. So it's going to take some time for you to get over that initial hurdle, especially when it comes to new work. Okay. But either way, there's going to be a work situation coming into the picture. Many of you might have been wanting to leave a bad work situation for some time, uh, a situation where you don't feel that sense of connection with the people that you work with. You feel like you have to guard yourself or keep yourself on guard with those people. Okay. And so you're shifting into a different work environment where people are nicer. They're more, they're less combative and more uh, cooperative. They're nice. They, um, they help one another and the environment is not cutthroat or the environment is not gossipy or the environment overall is just a lot more, uh, amicable. Okay. I'm also seeing as well for those of you who might have children and then you're like, um, dealing with, you know, the baby's mother or the baby's father, there's going to be some type of a amicable. So if things have been really problematic, um, if there has been, you know, perceived like hostilities or jealousies and things like that regarding, you know, uh, our exes and, and then, um, especially like if we have children with them, it's always very difficult to co-parent. Okay. It's very, very difficult, but I feel like there is going to be some type of a truce, some type of a resolution, some type of a peace agreement to make the situation a lot more amicable. So there's an ironing out or smoothing out of major relationships in your life in general that, that I'm seeing for this month. So both of these are very, very, very beautiful. Okay. And they're pointing in different directions. And, um, what I'm feeling is some of you might be thinking about blending the two blending love with money making, uh, activities. So like somebody you might be in a relationship with, you're like, you know what? I have this great business idea. Why don't we, you know, partner up. And then I'm also sensing as well, um, lots of attraction in a new work environment, if you're changing jobs, 
new work comes first new money comes first and then the new love is going to be as well coming into the picture so you have some beautiful beautiful blessed energies that are coming into the month of march for you it's um actually divine timing because we're shifting or we have shifted in the time into the time of pisces which is a compatible sign it's a uh, fellow water sign so it, the energy is very compatible for you guys um cancers so you have some good things that are going to be coming into the picture i would say get the new work situation let that sort itself out if you're jumping into a new environment keep your nose to the grindstone don't you know go out too much and socialize with co-workers you need to know you know like um, anytime we're in a new work environment and uh, we need to kind of know the pecking order what i like to call the pecking order first before we jump in and socialize because i feel like strategically it's the the smart thing to do okay so don't get too involved with the co-workers don't get especially you know office romances and, and get wrapped up in the office politics but it is really smart for us to kind of get the lay of the land know the pecking order know who to come to for advice know who to avoid and we always have those people in the office environment that might be gossips too so you don't want to reveal too much you guys are very friendly very sociable you want to be liked and you want to just jump in and and just you know make a splash and 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 be very social but i feel like there are things here that's really telling you focus on this first okay focus your energy on this keep yourself a little bit more closed off mainly because I feel like if you're out there trying to make offers, trying to make a splash, it might not be the best move just yet, okay? So get the lay of the land. Understand the, the who's, who's where on that totem pole before you choose who to ally, uh, ally yourself with or align yourself with, okay? So I hope the reading is helpful, um, Cancers, and I wish you the best for this month of March 2019. Um, for those who are still emailing me about private readings, believe it or not, I'm still getting these emails. Um, if you're interested in booking a reading for yourself, I have somebody that I uh, highly, highly recommend. Her name is Bridget. She is a psychic out of California. Um, I've included a link to her scheduling website. You can find that below in the description box. If you'd like to book a reading for yourself, I highly recommend her and uh, she's amazing. And um, I've used her services. I've also for like the past two years and i've also recommended a lot of my friends and family members to use her and they've been really really satisfied with her um with her reading she's phenomenal so i highly recommend her so cancers i wish you the best okay i'm really happy to see this for you and uh, i hope that the second half of the month will bring you much more blessings as well so take care of yourself